copper or steel, coal or gas. I am referring to miniature steam boilers, which is better and why. My personal preference is coal firing, but gas firing is very convenient because you can turn the heat on and off when you want, and if you open the windows, you can actually run gas-fired boilers indoors. I frequently run gas-fired boilers in the workshop to test them usually. You're currently watching an old VHS video of me, yes, that's definitely me, running my Stania Black 5 when I was in my late 30s. Happy days. I spent a lot of time running around the West Riding Small Locomotive Society's track in those days. At the time of this video, I had a young family and we needed more space, so I sold the engine to put the money towards a deposit for a house. I have to say, I really do prefer coal firing. It's a lot more fun. And on screen at the moment is something that is not miniature in any way. This is a Stania Black 5. I would think it has a steel boiler with maybe a copper firebox, which is a good combination. But how does it work when the boiler is not as big as the one on the Black 5? This, for instance, is on a 7.25 inch gauge, narrow gauge locomotive at Pugney's Water Park in Wakefield. This is a very nice engine, and you could call it a sort of small full size one, really, because the driver actually does sit inside it. This engine has a professionally built steel welded boiler, and provided that the engine is well cared for, a steel boiler of this size should last quite a long time. This is a copper boiler. It's of copper and silver soldered construction. Here's another copper boiler. This is a Stuart HB6, a very nice boiler. This one is designed to be gas fired, as indeed are these. This is a pair of Cotswold Heritage boilers. You will see now that there's sort of a trend being established. Every boiler that I'm showing you on screen, which is a small boiler, is made from copper. Even this one, which is a little bit bigger, six inches in diameter and quite tall. This is the really excellent Castle Steam V6 boiler, and it's currently supplying steam to a Stuart 5A steam engine. And with its two and a quarter inch bore cylinder, it has quite a good appetite for steam. In this clip, I'm shoveling plenty of coal into the fire hole. This boiler has quite a high steaming capacity, and once all this coal that I'm putting on the fire catches light, it will produce more than enough steam for a 5A. There are a couple of reasons why boilers are made from steel rather than copper. The first one is the price. Copper is quite expensive. Apart from the price then, what is the other disadvantage of having a copper boiler? And the answer to that one is strength for the application. This great Foden steam lorry is owned by my friend Dave Hall, and all this motion work that you can see spinning round has to be supported by the boiler itself. This engine also has a steel boiler. This clip shows the display in the tent at the same rally, and as you can see, these are all very small models, and the small Mammod type don't even have copper boilers. Their boilers are made from extruded brass. I saw a video once on YouTube showing how they made them, and it was quite amazing. This is my four and a half inch scale traction engine, and it's a bit unusual. It's a big engine, it's not small at all. If you look at the size of me, and I'm not small at all either, sat behind it, you'll see how big it is. It's seven feet long. With a traction engine, the boiler is a structural part of the system. The two plates that support the motion and the wheels, etc., bolt to the boiler at the back, and the front wheels, of course, at the front. To make this boiler strong enough to do all this supporting of major components, when it was built, the barrel was reinforced. I have some photographs in an album, and it shows this being done. So you may be thinking, why didn't I buy a steel boiler traction engine? One of the problems with steel boilers is, after a while, and that's a few years, it's not like after a few months, you will generally need to replace the tubes. They can be knocked out and refitted. If you buy a traction engine with a brand new steel boiler and look after it, like blowing it down to get rid of all the water after every run, combined with using water treatment that apparently coats the inside of the boiler with tannin, which slows down the rusting process, there's no reason why a steel boiler couldn't last quite a long time. But I didn't want to take the chance because this was a used model 
built in 1995, and when I saw a thing of this size that was a copper boiler, I thought, yes, this is the one for me. I rebuilt this excellent boiler back in 2018. It's a very unusual design. It has a large centre flue, and about a third of the way in, it changes to a fire tube boiler. It's not a water tube boiler, no cross water tubes at all, just a big flue, which then becomes several fire tubes. This is a sievert gas burner head, and it's a very small one, with a long, thin flame. This is the view down the centre flue, and you can see the seven fire tubes. This is a very well-made boiler. As I haven't used it for a couple of years, it's not surprising that the hand pump doesn't work. That's because the stainless steel ball on the inlet is stuck. It's not that important at the moment, because the boiler is over full to start with and using the convenient blow-down valve, I'm removing some of the water. Here's how I fix hand pumps when the balls are stuck. I'm applying a gentle heat. If I apply too much heat, then the paint's going to burn off. The general idea is just to warm up the part so that the metal expands and releases the ball from the seat. And there we go, it's working fine. This clip is running at double speed. I just wanted to show how the pump pumps the water from the tank into the boiler. Something called howling is a major problem with centre flue boilers, particularly when they are fired using ceramic burners. Time to run the engine, I think. I don't have a displacement lubricator on this engine, so I put some steam oil in the pipe, and the rest of the lubrication for the entire test will be by the steam and the water. This boiler is not fitted with a superheater, so the steam isn't so hot, it's actually wet steam, and it's the high content of water in wet steam that lubricates the cylinder. This beam engine is still a bit tight in places, so I think that by running it this way, it should loosen up. With the engine running, the pressure seems to sit at about 50 pounds per square inch. Let me show you what's happening at the burner end. You can clearly see the very long, thin, powerful flame. This is one of a range of boilers that used to be made by Max Steam. A man called Mike Abbott in Macclesfield made them to a very high standard. The design features, as in the name, a centre flue that goes all the way down the boiler. The horizontal centre flue changes to a vertical flue where you can fit a chimney, as shown here. The tube, though, is not just a tube, because crisscrossed inside the horizontal part of the centre flue are lots of water tubes, and this gives a much higher surface area for heating the water. This is a Stuart Models HB6 boiler. And what a work of art this is. It takes cross water tubes to a whole different level. Some centre flue boilers with water tubes simply have cross tubes, vertical ones and horizontal ones. But the cross water tubes in this type of boiler are very cleverly designed. They're designed to capture as much heat as possible. That's why they're radiated in the manner that they are. Building boilers this way makes for a more efficient heat exchange system. And while on the subject of heat, this is the heater that fits into the end of the boiler. As you can see, it's a large ceramic type burner. And the good thing about this ceramic burner is that it has the correct type of ceramic. Because some ceramic burners these days use a different kind of ceramic and it's not very good. They do tend to overheat. This boiler powers a twin Stuart Victoria. And it really does provide more than enough steam for this. I could probably run two or three of these Twin Victorias on an HB6 boiler. A Twin Victoria consists of two cylinders, obviously, both of which have a bore of one inch. And at this point, the engine is running quite well. And when I look at the pressure gauge on the boiler, it's still at 60 pounds per square inch. And this is mainly due to the design of the boiler and the burner. Before gas firing became popular, many weird and wonderful designs of burner were out there. Most were like modified paraffin blow lamps, some even use petrol. These days though, gas firing is very convenient for firing model boilers. If you get into trouble with low water, you can just turn the gas off, an instant cut off of the heat source. So what's it going to be, coal firing or gas firing? As I mentioned at the beginning, for me, coal firing is much more fun and much more prototypical. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. 
and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.